Hey everybody, uh, what a great group of films we just saw. Uh, welcome to the Q&A for the program Different Perspectives, part of the 2021 SF Indie Fest Indie Shorts Film Festival. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, some of the filmmakers here with us today. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us for this Q&A uh, from all different parts of the globe, I've found out. Um, so let me just have these filmmakers introduce themselves. My name is Jason Wallace. I'm the Shorts Film Progressor, but I will go around the room, the Zoom room, and call each one out to introduce themselves. If you guys could tell us your name, maybe your role on the film, and uh, a short synopsis about the film, even though we just saw it. But, uh, you know, the brief elevator pitch, just so we can get reoriented with uh, your movie. Uh, and Russ, since you're first on my uh, Zoom grid here, if you'd go. Yeah, please. my name is, uh, yeah, I'm I Patrick Alcedo. Uh, uh, I'm a Filipino uh, from, based in Toronto. I'm the director, producer, and writer of the documentary um, called um, They Call Me Dax. Uh, this is a... Um, a story or a, a I followed the life of a um, an underprivileged uh, Filipino Filipina teenager who dreams of becoming a ballet dancer someday and lives in a very big city called Quezon City uh, lives by herself so I just wanted to show the grit um, and the perseverance of this very young very admirable inspiring um, young uh, woman Yes, and you did that well. You did. Um, <clears throat> what city was that again, and where is that located? Because my geography is bad. It's, it's in Manila, but it's okay. in an adjacent city called Quezon City, which is a very big city. It's the biggest city in, in the country, actually. Ah, wow. Uh, yeah, and you have some beautiful shots that you captured of that uh, area, for sure, with drone shots and whatnot. Is that correct? I think I remember that. Yes, yes, we did. We did, yeah. Uh, uh, part of the, the decision to really show the neighborhood was to do an aerial shot. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Beautiful. Julia, um, your introduction, please. Hi, uh, I'm Julia. I'm from Finland. I'm the director of the fiction, short fiction film called My Days of Night um, that I directed. And here with us is also Marina Morais, who's my screenwriter. Um, so My Days of Night is a fantastical sort of experimental uh, coming of age movie. Um, it's a story about a girl who lives in a town where the sun doesn't shine anymore, somewhere up in rural Scotland. And she lives in this town with her eccentric um, uncle, Maxim. And the main character, Ellis, um, is a girl who's recording her life with by the use of a old TV cam. And the film consists of her own footage and contemplations of, of uh, moving on in life. And another beautifully shot movie, too. Very gorgeous, by the way. Well done. Uh, Maria, uh, Marina, go ahead and uh, chime in here. You're welcome to introduce yourself as well. I'm not going to repeat the story, like, because uh, you already said it. But yeah, I'm, I'm Marina. I wrote My Days of Night along with Julia and our producer, Clarice. And, uh, and yeah, it was basically a, a story based on all our a metaphor for all our the things that we felt that we needed to let go of so it was a beautiful process and i'm very glad to see it now in a festival uh just curious you might talk about this during the q a uh a recent uh collaboration creation uh, in other words during the pandemic or pre-pandemic ours is pre-pandemic okay yeah, pre kind of relevant to, coincidentally right uh, yeah that yeah, movie, we found that yeah. it reasoned a lot with with people after the pandemic because it was easier to identify with the process she was going through which was uh, a new perspective for all yeah of us. for sure for sure um as a matter of fact all these films uh, in this block this program is an eclectic group of mix of films we could have maybe programmed in separate things like possibly sci-fi, possibly uh, coming of age, you know, um, global perspective, stuff like that. Uh, but for some uh, reason, we liked uh, your group of films together here. Um, but we could have put them in other places. Um, Helene, if you'd be so kind, just go next and Guy as well. Hi, uh, my name is Hélène Goupil, and this is Guy Clark. And I, I, uh, I forgive me if I mispronounce your names. All right. <laughs> Uh, my film is The Seed, and it's about um, Guy, who's sitting next to me, and he has been um, selling flowers on uh, the same corner since 1982. Yes. 
and um, after 28 years of living in the same apartment, finds himself um, priced out of his own neighborhood. And the, the, the same uh, corner in San Francisco, California, yes. correct? Yes. Yes. Near the cast. Got it. And Guy, would you like to say anything? Introduce yourself? Um, well, my name is Guy Clark, and um, I'm glad I have the opportunity to share with uh, people um, the struggles that um, uh, that um, senior citizens and disabled people and just regular people uh, who live in a community for a while get uh, priced out because of just money. You know, it's not that we're not working. It's just that, um, you know, sometimes when they uh, take your house over or your apartment over, um, it becomes a million dollar condo yep. and um you know it's my story of uh letting people know what the city is doing to um to its older um inhabitants yeah it's it's inhabitants that yeah. love the city this or could have also doing. been this could have been a group um, of films about place even now that I think about it, you know, a sense of place, a sense of space uh, and your stories in them. Um, and then, but last but not least, uh, Kevin, if you'd introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Kevin Kodama. I'm a cinema student at SF State. Um, Gloomy Moon is like just a little passion project. It's a music video. Um, and I like the th how you mentioned the theme of space and stuff because it's mostly about um, a young woman um, trying to like discover herself within the city of San Francisco and kind of using location to like inspire that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be here and um, see everyone's stuff. Right on. Congratulations. We're excited to have you here. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I didn't even realize, but I thought I recognized some of the alleys in your dance film. Um, I can't remember the names, but it's like the one with a lot of murals. Uh, Balmy Alley. Movie. Which yeah. one? Balmy Alley is the uh, yeah. one. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think I've shot a couple scenes in that alley, too. Uh, it's a beautiful film. I think we have a couple dance films in this group. You're representing the dance film here. Um, so, uh, Kevin, since I'm talking to you, is this your first film? Um, I mean, it's not not really. I've made other stuff in like community college, and, um, but this was kind of like one of the first projects that I've worked with other people with, I guess you could say. Gotcha, your first major collaboration. Well, uh, good work. Uh, what was the inspiration for it? Um, it was mostly just like being in the city, it was, my first year um, at State, and um, I met the actress, Emily, um, in a class and just kind of collaborated with her um, in writing that. And so it was mostly um, inspired by, by her and the city um, in general. Got it. And then uh, Julia and Marina, uh, you both can answer in your own time. Um, what was your inspiration for your film? I gotta thank where it all started actually. Yeah, where, where did it all start? Like, uh, it was in Edinburgh, you know, that's an inspiring town. Did you see something? What was the seed? What was the, um, the catalyst? What was the spark? Well, um, I come from a country that is known to be very dark at half, most, mm. most of the year. Um, we get polar nights in Finland and it's, uh, people actually live in, in proper darkness. Uh, not throughout the year, but uh, part of the year. And uh, the metaphor of darkness and light was something that we were interested in exploring um, as a metaphor in life and as something that we all carry within us. And yeah, uh, and we wanted, I guess we wanted to tell a coming of age story that would be relatable, but at the same time, I'm very fond of magical realism as a genre and as an approach and kind of bending Bending reality like the characters as uh, like Maxine says in the film. Um, Marina, if you can continue. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we made the film as part of a master's degree, an international master's degree. So we were all 
out of our of our hometowns, very far away for some of us. And the producer is also Brazilian like me. And uh, that was uh, the main point of convergence that we found among the three of us, this displacement, this, you know, uh, a different sense of identification that does not necessarily mean, what does home mean and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was, we, we, we were just having uh, a lot of uh, personal conversations and kind of reached uh, uh, the story that we wanted to tell. And I actually come from a place that is completely different from Judea. I come from Judea, I come from uh, the Northeast of Brazil. So it's basically sunny the entire year. We don't even have uh, seasons. We have just 30 degrees Celsius every day. Uh, <laughs> and still, what does it mean? Like, does it mean that we are happier because we have more sun? Um, so yeah, it was, it was, an intriguing idea to develop. Yeah, indeed, and you, you conveyed that well. Uh, Russ, uh, your inspiration, how did it start? Well, this actually, the, yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. I mean, it's this this, this, um, th this film actually is part of a larger project. Hmm. Um, and in and when I was making the feature length film, I, I doxed the, the, the character uh, really stood out and I said, oh, she deserves, she really can, um, she could be her own documentary. Um, oh, so, so is it is it a larger narrative film? Fictional yeah, it's film? a larger. Yeah, the, the, it's a will to dream. It's a it's a ninety five minute, and she's still part of it. But but what I did was to extract, if you will, oh. uh, Dax, and to really build her own narrative because I felt like she deserves her own film. And I'm a dance professor, um, and I'm a dance anthropologist, um, and I've always been passionate about linking dance with social justice issues. Mm. And I really want to show that dance is obviously not just entertainment, but dance is an empowering tool. And, and it's an empowering tool uh, for the marginalized, for the poor. I was inspired by this program in Quezon City that teaches for free ballet and, and, and professional dancing to, to marginalized uh, children and youth. So I've been doing a lot of anthropological ethnographic project in that in that organization for years for like actually for almost five years. And so the inspiration really came from that community and I mm -hmm. saw the grit, I saw the 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 precarity, um, the, the the difficult lives that they were experiencing and I said that you know this this has to be shown to the world because these themes are universal and relatable and yeah. and um, yeah. Wow. And uh, you need to check out Gloomy Moon by Kevin down there. In this oh, I program. saw it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw all the films. I mean, my goodness. I mean, and then, I'm and so then, honored. Uh, Dear yeah. Black Girls, too, uh, a dance film, uh, also in this program. Uh, mm -hmm. Wonderful film. So we have a, a, a variety of different dance films in the, in the festival this year, too. Um, and I did sense uh, when I started watching your film, it almost, it has a, I mean, documentaries are narratives, too, in a way. But, I mean, it had a fictional narrative quality that was... Um, was uh, a benefit to the film as well. It, it, it carried us along the story even more, and, you know, brought us in even more. Did you intend that? No, well, thank you for that, Jeff. That's really a, a huge compliment. I, I'm thank Jason, you. by the way, let I'm me- I'm sorry, Jason. That's <laughs> I've been all right, that's right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. My, my, my apologies. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you for that. I, I really, I mean, the, the post the post production for this documentary took a while because I really wanted the story to flow. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know I mean we were looking at we were looking at you know I mean just like anybody else I mean you do you do the production you have hours and hours and footage and and so I took I took the patience and also I did the subtitling that subtitling was was because I speak the language and yeah. I was very careful that the nuances were captured in English. Right. Interesting. Didn't think of that. Uh, Helene uh, Guy, uh, how did your collaboration, your story start, your movie yeah. start? Yeah, the inspiration came from meeting Guy, really. I met him 11 years ago now. Yeah. Um, and at the beginning, it was for, uh, I was in graduate school at UC Berkeley at the School of Journalism. And I started um, talking to him and I realized that although so many people in the neighborhood and in the city know Guy because he's been there forever and they walk by him every day, um, and, but not a lot of people knew what he was going through. And, and then I, I made a first piece um, at the time in 2010. And then I, you know, I stayed in touch with Guy um, and I, I actually lived nearby and 
he knows my family, he knows my kids, my husband. And, um, and I kept thinking, you know, like a story of displacement doesn't stop, you know, after you've been displaced, it, it life continues. And so I wanted to go back and, and film Guy again and, and tell his whole story. Yeah, excellent. Now, um, this kind of maybe doesn't pertain to every film, but let me go back to the dance films, Russ and Kevin. Um, mm -hmm. You know, how did you uh, capture those performances? Um, did they, were they just welcoming uh, and let you collaborate and be there with them? Or did you have to, you know, kind of entice them to loosen up to perform? Maybe I could start. I mean, yeah. uh, because I've been doing work with um, with the with the school um, for the marginalized. It 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 and I built I built so much rapport with them, um, and I think that's that's really you know I learned in the documentary uh, because my training is in anthropology that you know there's really no replacement for for personal um, engagement for for your commitment um, and they see that you are you are sincere and 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 of course you follow all the ethics pro, the ethic protocols i mean you have to inform them that this is part of a documentary work um, and that we are going to film so i wanted it to, to be an observational kind of work um, and so well, they, I would they just, let they let you in pretty close i mean you know they they seem very interesting you, you get pretty intimate it seems at times with you know some scenes in the in the movie yeah, and, and and it's really um and especially when she talks about her own struggles and you know and she cries and and even the with her relationship with her mom. But you know, I mean those things don't happen overnight. I mean, you you really and you also cannot, you know, I, I believe I believe in, in collaboration. So I, I said to Dax, you know, Dax, I'm really inspired by your film and do you want me to really explore this? And 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 I would just tell her what I what my plans are. And sometimes she would even tell me, like that scene in the school. And mm -hmm. I'd ask her, like one day, Dax, I'm running out of ideas. What do you think is a good idea for today? I said, Oh, I'm going to my school. I'm gonna be in my uniform and la la. la. And and you know, I just we just followed. So I kind of like let her even author her own story. Oh, good. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Uh, Kevin, how did, uh, how was your dancer? How was she so um, free and loose? Um, yeah, I would just kind of give her all the credit here. Um, <laughs> she, she was just very, she's very open and um, like accessible, I guess. Um, me and her have like rapport too. I think that's like a huge part of it is just having like, um, like a personal connection beyond like a working relationship, um, especially as an actor and director, um, that there's a lot of like trust there, I feel like. And um, it was just having that comfortability with her to be able to like ask her, you know, dance here for whatever, whatever. I've been, um, I've been involved in dance videos where it took a long time for the dancers to get loose and warm up and slow yeah. to stop, so. Um, Definitely. Uh, Helene and Guy, uh, since you're a documentary, I'll go to the narrative uh, couple next after that. Um, you know, how did you guys um, collaborate? How was your relationship making the movie? Do you want to? Do you, want to... Um, you go. Okay. Um, so I started filming. I mean, Guy gave me great access. Like I told him that I just wanted to show what his life was like and not just at the flower stand, but you know, what what happens, what what does his life look like before and after when he's doing laundry, when he's cooking breakfast, when he's going to, you know, buy flowers. And so I just wanted, so I just asked him, you know, he gets up really early to go um, to go get flowers at the flower market. Mm -hmm. So I was there with him at five in the morning and then I followed him. He has a really long day. And it's a pretty physical job, and I kind of I wanted to capture all of that. And and uh, guy, you were uh, letting her in right. From, you just walked up on the street and said, "Hey, I want to make a movie about you." And guys, like, <laughs> sure, follow me around to my laundromat. Come and find me. <laughs> no, it wasn't exactly like that, but um, you know, I wanted to uh, let people know because they see me as the flower man on the corner that's been there for four decades. And, you know, always in a, a, a nice attire. And 
they have no idea what's really going on, you know, being displaced, you know, being in, in uh, um, a home for 28 years and then all of a sudden having your home taken from you and then having your workspace taken from you. And I wanted, you know, people to realize that I'm going through um, a struggle here and even though it, it's not apparent, it, even though you don't see it, you know, I want to share this with you because it's just not my story. It's lots of people's stories because, you know, in cities, they're always building new housing, new accommodations for people, but they don't tell you the, under, the underbelly story of, of what's going on because all these people are being displaced for people who, who, who have money mm -hmm. and can afford, you know, the new prices. And um, I was just, you know, happy to uh, tell Helena that um, the story goes deeper, you know, because it's, it's just not me. It's, it's every city around the world that where they build new developments and they don't tell you what, they swept under the rug. And I think when we first met, it was at a time in San Francisco that was really, the city was really changing, like tech money was coming in, you know, all these tech companies were moving in and we were seeing this change, like all these places were going up for sale. And, you know, you can, you can read statistics and percentages about homelessness and displacement, but it doesn't really I don't, I think like with documentary, you can really tell someone's personal life and it, and it has more of an impact because it could be any of us. Like, you know, yeah. this is someone who's yeah. been part of this neighborhood for such a long time and has helped so many people. You know, a guy like donated so many flowers during the AIDS epidemic when they had, he was seeing funeral after funeral and he, yeah, you know, he found himself in in a in that situation where he could not find anything that he could afford. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. And and, and these stories uh, continue. Like it's not like you come to a solution or a, a result, and then everything's peachy keen, everything's resolved. We have to continue these stories because it's never ending. There's other people struggling. So these documentaries, these movies. Uh, keep us alert, keep us on our toes to uh, to the struggles that people uh, are having. Um, so that's why it's important that you guys keep making these stories, uh, sharing these stories. Um, and that's why I went uh, back 10 years later, because I wanted, you know, like his story is not done. When, when did you make your movie? Or when was... Uh, I just finished it uh, this this summer. We filmed last year, um, but the the first time I filmed him was in 2010. Yeah. So it's 10 years in the making. But like I said, these kind of journeys never stop. I'm sorry, go. You're gonna say something, guy. I, I, you know, during that time when I had lost my home and lost my workspace, and there was a lady in the neighborhood who was uh, very compassionate with my story, and she was saying, "Let me tell you something. That home and that workspace doesn't define who you really are." She said, um, do you understand what I'm saying? And at that time, I really didn't understand what she was saying. She said, you know, you're bigger than, than your home and your workspace, you know? And um, finally the light came on and I felt as though I had something to share with people because, you know, 40% of the homeless were were moved out of their homes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's sort of like there is light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I'm going to interrupt you because it's a nice segue to Julia and Marina, because I kind of think, you know, you're you're talking about light, too. And like I said, these stories need to be repeated and continued to be told because the struggle never ends. Uh, stories, uh, people's struggles never end. And just like in your movie, you know, people need to keep finding the light, seeing the light, as Guy just mentioned. So talk about that, if you would, uh, Julia and uh, Marina. Yeah, I guess uh, that light is what we're all heading towards in our lives in a way or another. Um, I found 
that I find that using through using poetic and more kind of fantastical imagery, one can also tell stories in a in a different way that can touch people. Um, and it in our film's case, I guess the fantastical story world setting definitely did serve as an allegory for um, getting out of that dark place. And also not that dark, this always is something to be, that would need to be avoided. I, we were all kind of contemplating and reflecting on the themes quite profoundly. And it felt like a, almost like a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. putting this film together at times. And it was in a very easy production, but what's kind of what I see at the core of the film is also the acceptance of the darkness as a equal part. Without light, there wouldn't be darkness and vice versa. So um, yeah, those are- And since, and since I'm, we're on, you just kind of started from the question of how you uh, got the performances out of the actors. Uh, your acting in your movie is fantastic, especially the younger person, which, you know, in indie filmmaking, they say sometimes if you're gonna make a, a low budget movie, stay away from kids and, and explosions and animals, right? And yeah. uh, so how did you elicit the, the wonderful performances? Amy Lally is a fantastic young actress. She was really a gift and a joy to work with. And um, I'm very, very happy that we discovered her and she was able to work you with her. You discovered her. her. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We did a long casting process and uh, it was sort of serendipitous. Same thing uh, about Michael Daviot, uh, about Maxine's actor. I think both of those actors already kind of had what those characters had in them. Mm. Sometimes as director, you're hoping that you will find just the right person to play the part of a more eccentric character. And sometimes you don't quite it feels off and often the character keeps on changing it always changes when you find an actor who's doing the part but in Michael's and Amy's case they they really I felt like they were living the story and could definitely relate to it but yeah for my part I love working with young people that's my passion and I think young people and youth in general inspires me a lot um right on well I enjoy working with kids there's a different kind of energy uh in there and um although i have to say that both of my actors were very 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 professional in their jobs as well yep they were excellent wonderful performances marina do you want to talk to any of those topics we've been discussing yeah i mean like like you just said about because we tend to think that uh there's an extreme difficult situation that's when you have to leave but sometimes things don't have to be completely horrible uh, like in the story, yes, there's a darkness, but there's this connection with this person that makes up her entire life and, and he, he tries to make it uh, into a magical world, to make the, that universe into a mag magical world. So uh, it's not that easy for us to simply move on, let go and move on, because it's not, we're not leaving a nightmare and going to a, a beautiful dream. There, there are struggles on both sides. So that was also something that we wanted to achieve, uh, especially because we live in a in a time where it's an era of extremes. So uh, that's not really healthy. We 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 gain nothing by by looking at things like that. So that was uh, that was very important for us to 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 bring that to to light. Yeah. Well, that, that leads me to one of my final questions coming up. Um, you know, I'll stay with you, Marina. Uh, was there something that you were hoping audiences would get from watching the movie? You know, uh, an emotion that you would evoke out of them or something you convey after watching your film? Yeah, we have this uh, line in the film. He, he calls her tenacious. And that was something that we wanted uh, people to kind of feel, to, to have the courage to, to assess their situation and to see that there might be more that they can... Um, hope for that they can they, they can still achieve uh even when everything seems completely unknown uh but you should still be able to look for what you 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 aim for in life um and to look for new things because also it's so uh yeah. i think that part of this of this era of extremes and the uh conservative atmosphere comes from this from a fear of the unknown and uh that's not something that uh will bring any 
any light or any any comfort to anybody just to, to keep doing the same things and ne never welcoming the new yeah mm. yeah i like that i like that word hope uh could have been maybe a program title for some of these um hey kevin how about you what's something you hope audiences felt after watching your movie um yeah um i was listening to marina's answer i was trying to think of something um but i really resonated with uh like the idea of hopefulness and like optimism um some inspirations for this was like wizard of oz and like door the explorer so kind of that like youthful energy kind of a thing um but i really like the idea of like hope and like finding um yourself in your surroundings and stuff and, and real um, quick what what did the what did the, is there a meaning to the face painting at the end and i'm sorry if i missed it yeah no it's it wasn't supposed to be very explicit but um it, basically there's a uh, an old um goddess and um she's like uh kind of about like the harvest art and um just like the self um so we were trying to incorporate that with like the palace of fine arts um the paintbrush and stuff i see um so cool. yeah it's put back to um Semily's own like heritage and like her background and stuff cool uh yeah. helene uh and guy anything you want audiences to feel or walk away with from your movie I think I want, uh, do you want to go first? Oh, you go. I think I want, I want people to think about the people that they walk by every single day and, and hmm. think, you know, do you really know how they're doing and, and ask those people. Um, and I also want people to get to know Guy better and I want them to see how much beauty there is in his life. And, and there is a lot of hope and, you know, I just hope that people can feel that. And you know, in, in my plight, um, I was inspired by um, some gospel songs that um, help people through the darkest times. There was this one song that um, the words uh, go, um, I've come this, uh, no, the words were, I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. And that kept going over in my head and it gave me inspiration to just take another step, you know, in spite of what's going on. Good, good lines to uh, <clears throat> replay in our heads. I could use those sometimes. I got to remember those. Um, well said. Uh, uh, Ju Julia, if you would, please. Uh, what do you hope audiences uh, get from your movie? Um, I guess I hope that people will, I hope that it inspires people's imagination. I think mm. the power of imagination and the subconscious side of our ourselves was um, a big part of the film, and I hope that the film brings some some solace to people that are also just transforming and changing, as everything is always in constant transformation. But I guess the theme of changing and letting go, and accepting that, and seeing that's going to be all right. Right on. And uh, Russ, how about you? Uh, what you hope to convey or evoke from your movie? Yeah, I, I, well, two things: grit and and home. Huh. And I really want to show that um, that the things that you learn in dance are actually applicable in everyday life. Um, the value. Also. Well, you know, I mean, the, the discipline that you do, the commitment that you have. I mean, if you want to become a good performer, dancer, you have to you have to do that long commute. You have to uh, wake up early. I mean, and you have to, you know, make certain sacrifices. And that that makes you a good performer, dancer. But those are the things that you also can apply in life. Um, and that and that that's really embodied by 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 Dax in the film right and on. the second one is home and I mean 
it doesn't mean that home is with your biological family, but you could build your own home. Um, and again, Dax showed that. I mean, the mother is a, it doesn't live with her, but she found a home yeah. through, for, through the, her community. So I think the ability of people to decide how, how you are going to be your own architect, right? Yeah. Um, you could build your own future. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, your next door neighbor. Well, hey, let, let me interrupt yeah. you because we're running out of time here, but I'll stay with you. Those are, uh, you're inspiring me to ask my last question. Just uh, parting words, anything you want to add, uh, advice um, or just a general statement or, you know, your last words that you can share with us uh, on this Q&A because we got to wrap it up. Yeah, me? You go. Yeah, yeah. You start, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I just want to show that, you know, that that life is difficult. You know, I mean, universally, I mean, wherever you are, you, you always face struggles. But I think it is your decision how you're going to live your life. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think through documentary films, through fiction films, you can find inspiration in the different ways of being human and the different ways of how we're going to survive in this world that is increasingly becoming more difficult. And, and, and again, going back to the theme of hope. Yeah, right on. Uh, Julia, uh, do you want to say anything? To wrap us up here, I agree to everything what uh, you just said earlier. I think I'll just leave it there. Thank you. <laughs> nice shortcut. And Marina, I'm going to have each one of you say a parting word here. Last uh, advice, uh, thoughts, anything? Um, well, I think uh, all our films somehow also speak about community. And I think mm. that's a very a very necessary conversation to have people really uh, there's that old saying that no man is an island or some or is the other way around but um that is true i mean we, we we really are part of a community we have to look not only at ourselves but at everyone around us because we don't really exist without this sense of uh collective well-being so i hope with uh because in our cases this is about the lack of community and looking for a community again. So, uh, yeah, I hope with all our films, people can understand that. Right on. That. Right on. Yeah, indeed. Kevin, how about you? What would you like to say for your parting words here? Uh, yeah, just piggybacking off community. I would just like to thank uh, everyone that I worked with on this project. Emily Espitia, the actress, James Wade, who produced the music. Um, and then Sasha Green, who is my VP, um, and then Paulo and Abigail and Jose, who also helped out. Um, and then also a special shout out to SF State and Cinema Collective uh, at our school. Right on. Uh, and Helene and Guy, uh, last chance to say something uh, you wanted to mention? I, I want to go back to what Russ was saying. I think trauma trauma happens in life and and you know, Guy is a great example of um, like choosing what you do with what happened to you is is really important. And I wanted to people to to remember that. Mm. And the experience that I went through made me be able to give more of myself. And I didn't think that that was possible, but there's a joy in giving and sharing, you know, because what I'm going through can help someone else. And, you know, I uh, enjoyed um, being able to participate in that. Right on. Well, we enjoyed being able to watch these movies and experience different slices of different parts of the world and different people's stories, thanks to you guys. Uh, and so I'd like to say thank you for being here, making the movies, uh, especially making the movies and applying to this film festival and getting in. Uh, congratulations. So congrats to you um, for getting the film festival. Good luck to your uh, filmmaking uh, festival run and your filmmaking careers. Um, I wish I could talk to you in person and talk to you more. It's been lovely chatting with you guys. Thank you. Oh, we gotta go. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. You're wonderful. Thank you. Have a good one. Good luck to you. Thank you.